Hi, this is Rob Sheen from the Source Conference, and I'm here with Georgia Weedman, who's the founder and CTO of Shavira. And she's going to be speaking at Source Boston on May 9th and 10th in 2018. And her talk, she's actually doing a panel, and she's going to be talking on hacking entrepreneurship, lessons from security startup founders, which is something I definitely like talking about. So um, as somebody who's founded a number of companies myself, I definitely appreciate having founders on on the show. Um, how did you get started starting companies? How did you decide, let's let's start a company rather than let's just go get a job? Well, actually, I got a DARPA Cyber Fast Track grant um, in 2012, and that was a great program um, from Mudge out of DARPA, and, you know, you didn't have to go through a lot of the paperwork for a lot of the, you know, usual government stuff. Um, and I had totally planned on keeping my job and just doing it, you know, as research, do conference, and thing like, things like that. Um, but then, you know, my job fired me about it. Basically, they wanted to put their name and get the money, and I was like, no, no. Um, so I kind of was forced out of the nest, if you will. Um, and then I did, you know, consulting, because I had been a penetration tester as a job, and I did training, and generally anything that didn't involve, like, touching insects to make money, um, you know, as one does. And, you know, after doing that for a little bit, I, you know, I did, had done the DARPA work and had continued to do research and wanting I wanted to productize it, you know, it was a good hacker tool, but wanted to, you know, make it into, you know, productized stuff that enterprises would buy. Um, so I came to the Mach 37 Accelerator in Northern Virginia, and, you know, they were specialized in taking, you know, really technical people like me that maybe didn't have the best business sense ever and, you know, helping them along that route. So going from, you know, the little consulting business to, you know, the product business. So still constantly learning, but, you know, it's always just been like, well, I think I'll go do this today. Not really some master plan. Right. So that shift from, so you did have some jobs before yeah. you worked at a startup. So what was that initial, I mean, it sounds like you kind of got a nudge instead of, you know, having it be, um, you know, a complete leap of faith, but what was that kind of transition like going from having a job to suddenly now you're on your own doing your own thing? Well, it was really stressful. Um, I actually, naturally, I mean, people think that it's a lot easier to work for yourself, but I work much, much harder. You know, when I had a job, you know, it was like, okay, get your work done. I, I, I played a lot of Halo. Um, now I, you know, don't even know where my game consoles are. Um, so, I mean, it was, and on top of that, it was things that, you know, I never had to think about, like, you know, what are these, like, weird tax documents for LLCs and now for, you know, C Corps in Delaware and, you know, getting registration paper. You know, I'm always getting nasty grams from, like, the state of Virginia being like, you didn't pay this. And it's like, well, I didn't know I had to. So, yeah, so it's, I mean, it's a lot of different stuff that as a technical person, you know, I didn't really know anything about. So I've had to learn, you know, a lot of different things. Mm. So, um, so along those lines, like, have you found it um, now that you've kind of made that transition? Um, you know, I noticed you've you've been actually you've been basically in C level positions now for the last couple of things. You've been a CEO, a CTO. Um, I mean, would would you ever go back to a job at this point? Absolutely, I would. I've you know, I actually have done just very recently in the last few months. Have you know, it's been a real coup for my company. Gotten some some really big, um, like non reoccurring revenue, like research projects for my, for my product, uh, you know, they wanting additional features and, you know, having to really dig in back into the research, which was, you know, how I got started. That's how I, you know, fell in love with InfoSec. So, you know, and it was really hard because it's like, while I've, you know, continued to develop my technical skills, it's just, I, you know, I've been doing all these other things as well. And I was like, man, I, I really miss like, research and you know speaking at conferences all the time because I do that a lot less now and you know a lot of the things that you know I really like better say than going to meetings with venture capitalists um, mm -hmm. kind of get pushed out so I mean I'm definitely 100 percent you know Shavir is what I'm doing right now but you know after exit or you know when when that comes to its fruition I, I could totally see myself you know either, you know, the people who acquire us or, you know, what have you being, you know, in a research position and, you know, doing 
conference talks on research and more, you know, the PR thing. Um, so, yeah, I could definitely like, see doing it again as well as, you know, I still do pen testing on the side, um, you know, keep the bills paid because products are expensive. Um, so, I mean, I could definitely see doing that again. I, I miss it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is considering starting their own company? Abandon all hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Um, I think that, I mean, the thing that, you know, as a technical person, I think, you know, I, I hate to bring up the woman thing because it's, you know, such a divisive um, topic right now. But, you know, especially being, you know, a technical female, it was, you know, almost a badge of honor to be like bad at social skills. It's like, you know, I'm really technical. I'm not really good at the people stuff, sales, marketing, all that other uh, for lesser mortals, which is, you know, having gotten out of that little bubble of, you know, technical people and into the real world, you know, you realize that's a complete nonsense. Like, you know, I know this, you can have a really great product, really great idea, really great everything, thing works, it can really solve a problem. But, you know, if you can't communicate that, like with actual people who are not as technical as you, you're not going to be able to sell any. And if you're not going to be able to sell anything, you're going to go out of business. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that, I mean, at least if you were, you know, someone who's thinking of it coming from, you know, that same, you know, technical Black Hat Def Con kind of, of background, I would definitely be like, you know, check your ego at the door because mm. uh, those things that you almost are proud of not being good at are going to be, the kinds of th things that are going to make it or break it for your company and you're really going to have to be you know a more well-rounded individual as well as you know surround yourself with you know people who do fill in the gaps in mm -hmm. you know you check your ego at the door is probably <laughs> probably pretty good advice i would say um so um what has been kind of the most rewarding thing for you about starting companies well What's been really rewarding is just, you know, seeing, you know, my dreams and ideas like, you know, come to fruition. You know, it's like I, I still, you know, when I look at my product when we're doing a demo or something, I still kind of like surprise is like all this out of some idea I had one day. So, I mean, that's really exciting as well as, you know, being able to to really make an impact, you know, in the industry to go from. You know, just again, I kind of came from, you know, very hardcore research conference, you know, that was my tribe, if you will. And it was, you know, other pen testers were using my stuff, but, you know, it wasn't necessarily being used, you know, to help an enterprise or save the world, if you will. And, you know, now having that opportunity where, you know, big enterprises are, you know, using my stuff to make, you know, their enterprises more secure. I mean, that's mind-blowing to me that i've been able to have that sort of impact cool that's awesome um yeah that's that's definitely a theme i've seen with other people i know that start companies is that idea that you can kind of manifest something from nothing just by oh i have this idea and then you snap your fingers and well and then a lot of work <laughs> yeah <laughs> but a then, lot of work <laughs> but then you basically build the team and you build the, the you know the whole mechanisms around it to make it you know, come to market and all that stuff. And then you have this thing that's out in the world that's having an influence and it's, it's pretty cool. So uh, awesome. So I, I can't wait to have, continue this conversation at Source. Um, I, I love that you can pick my brain on startup stuff all day long and I'll never get bored of it. So um, love to keep top, talking to you about this. Um, so again, Source Boston is on May 9th and 10th. And if you'd like to continue the conversation on hacking entrepreneurship with Georgia, she'll be at uh, Boston for the event and along with um, a few other panelists as well speaking on the same topic so it's going to be awesome yes thank you for having me on today and yeah I'm, I'm definitely looking forward this will be my first source conference great glad to have you thanks I'll see you soon